Bible Quiz family. And to everyone who has joined us for this online service, a very warm welcome. Today is our 16th week of service online. And for those who are like me, you'd have probably missed that last week we rolled into the second half of 2020. For me, that's because the focus was on the countdown towards 100 days of lockdown. It has been long. However, this morning, brothers and sisters, I would want us to set aside all the grief and the stress from the current pandemic and instead get strength from the joy of the Lord as we lead into this service. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your protection and for providing for our needs. We thank you for our church and that we are still able to listen to your word, though we can't physically meet. Lord, we pray that you continue to give us strength and hope as we seek comfort from your word. We pray for those who are sick and in difficult situations. Be with the doctors and healthcare workers during this period of COVID-19. Lord, we pray for our leaders as they make decisions. We thank you for Jomo and Brenda and all the leaders of our church. As we go into your word, may it find place in our hearts. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Today's reading comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. Salt and light. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, Christ Church family. It is wonderful that together again, we can gather around God's word this morning. It was wonderful to see the Sitole family especially the youngest family member who was born just before the lockdown. And we would continue indeed to serve God together and to serve our communities around us in this way. Would you please bow your heads with me as we pray? Our gracious Heavenly Father and Eternal God, we come to you again this morning in Jesus' name. We want to lift to you our church family members who are indeed battling at the moment with either economical situation, health situation. We commit them to you. We know that we are not immune to this virus and that sooner or later it will indeed begin to affect our family members. And some of our church members already have family members who are battling with the virus. So we, we commit our lives into your care. We commit those who are already impacted by this um, COVID-19, those who have contracted the virus. And we also want to pray for our health workers, our teachers, and our public servants who are serving under very difficult circumstances. We commit them all to your care. In Jesus' name, amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, it goes without saying, isn't it, that this COVID-19 darkness has really created this untold crisis both in our economy and in our livelihoods. There are so many people in our country whose salaries have been cut. There are many people whose businesses 
are still closed and they have not been able to open and they have no idea when they will be able to open. And as a result of this, the stress levels are at all time high for many people. We know that as a result of this COVID, many marriages are suffering. And of course, the impact of money in the marriage can be very, very negative. We know that many family relationships are under incredible stress. Many investors are cagey. They don't want to invest money because of this incredible uncertainty. And that is understandable. Parents, especially those with school-going children, are very stressed at the moment. Many would rather have their children at home, but they feel they have to send them to school, even though they know the risks, especially in those poor schools. The list goes on and on when it comes to the things that would cause stress as a result of this COVID. But this is also true, that the time we're living in is not normal. It's a very different time, and it is indeed a very challenging time. So wherever you are, whatever your present situation is, just remember, you are not alone. God is still with us. God still walks with us. But this morning, I really want to focus on us rather than on what God is doing and continues to do for us, but to look at what God expects of us as his people in this time. Because it's quite easy to forget about our responsibilities as Christians as a result of the stress and the pressure we're going through. So this morning, I want us to focus on that. And we are looking at that passage that Noku read. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. It's a very short passage, very familiar passage. First point in this passage. We are reminded that we are salt and light. That even though we are going through what we are going through, we are still salt and light. So think with me. In the midst of all this, in the midst of all this struggle, the challenges we face, the pain we go through, how are we to live as Christians? What does God expect of us? Are my brothers and sisters in Christ, The gospel message is still the same, isn't it? God says to you and to me, we have a very important role to play in our country, especially at this time. We are called to be salt and light. We are the salt of the earth and we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. We are called to preserve this earth, isn't it? This passage, God reminds us that we, as his people, we should preserve this earth with the biblical, the gospel salt. And it also reminds us that we need to shine that gospel light into the world that is struggling. We are called to be God's ambassadors in this world. And that role is very, very important because People can come to us to hear the good news of the gospel. They can come to us to hear the the, the wonderful promises of God in the midst of the struggle that we are going through. We are called to live lives that glorify God, lives that seek to honor his name under these present circumstances. We are called to remain in the world. So in other words, God says to you and to me, in the midst of all this pandemic, we mustn't retreat. We must live for him. We must seek to honor him. And in doing so, the world will see his glory in us and through us. 
It's just a summary of this passage. God says to you and to me, continue to influence the world. Continue to spread the gospel. Continue to live godly lives in the midst of all this. But let's explore these points a little bit more. So we're going to look at verse 13 first. Salt of the earth. A stick into this. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under the people's feet. You are the salt of the earth. You have the role to play. And if you lose that saltiness, God says, you are of no good use into the kingdom. The kingdom expects us to be active citizens. If you have given your life to Christ, if Jesus is your Lord and Savior, if you've come the child of God, the Bible says you are the salt of the earth. And you need to continue to influence the world. And you need to do so in good times and in tough times. So in other words, we, the gospel doesn't say when things are difficult, when life is tough, you can retreat and God would understand. No, the gospel expects us to continue to live God-honoring lives, even though we're facing difficulties and challenges. You and I, my brothers and sisters in Christ, as Christians, we can bring that distinctive kingdom flavor into the world of darkness. And that's what Jesus is calling us to do. And that's why Jesus says to his disciple, you are the salt of the earth. He's not saying you should, you ought to be, you probably should. No, he's saying you are, that's who you are. So I am John Mungtun and I cannot be anyone else. And the gospel says to me, you are the child of God. You cannot be someone else. You, God has called you as you are, and God has given you the skills, the abilities that only you can use to effect the gospel work on this planet. You are the salt of the earth. Are you still salty? And I know the young people, when they use that term, they use it negatively to say, you grumpy. But the gospel calls us to remain salty in the earth so that we could, we could continue to influence the world with this gospel flavor, with the kingdom flavor. You are the salt of the earth. But are you? Are you really being effective in the kingdom at this point in time? Or you've lost your saltiness under the weight of this COVID pandemic. I think it is important, my brothers and sisters in Christ, for us to pause for a moment. To have an honest introspection of our lives as God's people. To look at our walk with Christ. To look at the way we behave and ask ourselves, are we being Christian? Are we still living like Christians who believe that God is in control? Because it's quite easy when you look at the economic situation to really throw the ha your hands in the air and begin to speak as if you don't believe that God is still in control. And I want to remind you, God is still in control and God will remain in control. And therefore, your present situation, no matter how bad it may look like, 
God is still in control of that situation. You've got to trust him. And you've got to continue to walk with him. Think about it. Has it ever crossed your mind that this COVID-19 pandemic and all its problems, I mean, I'm not really um, minimizing the negative impact of this COVID. It really is out there and we can all see it. But has it crossed your mind that it does not only just bring this negative um, impact in our lives, but that it also presents us with new opportunities? Have you ever thought about it that way? Or maybe you're sitting there and you're saying, opportunities, what opportunities, Jomo? And here's the thing, here's the thing, and think with me. In spite of this lingering uncertainty, COVID continues to present us with opportunities. It has forced us to really sit and think things through. This pandemic has given all of us the opportunity to reflect on our lives, to reflect on our commitment to the gospel, to reevaluate our distorted views and values of life. And it has forced us to relook at our priorities. These are new opportunities. It is for you to sit and with, be honest with yourself and ask difficult questions about why God has placed us where we are and where God wants us to be and how do we move from where we are to where God wants us to be. These are opportunities. COVID-19 offers us an opportunity to find New ways of doing things. We've always done things certain way, but this COVID-19 has actually forced us to rethink how we do things. Of course, this service is a classic example that we could have church in this way. You sitting there, maybe in your pajamas with a cup of coffee, it's in the morning and you're relaxed at home. Who would have thought we'll be able to do church this way? Yes, we know it is not the best way. But this COVID-19 thing has made us to come up with these ideas. It has given us creative ways of thinking about how to reach the world with the gospel. I mean, when you look at all the things that are out there online about how people are ministering the word of God to people who would otherwise never make it to church, these are new opportunities that the gospel, that this virus has presented to us. But it has also presented us with an opportunity to find creative ways of living, of relating to people, of working with people, of serving in the kingdom, and of helping those people that God has placed or brought into our lives. There are so many changes that have taken place and not all of them are negative. Some of them are wonderful. Brothers and sisters, Christian life is lived in the real world, a world that is full of broken people. Like the rest of us, the fact that we are Christian, it doesn't mean we are immune to problems that God will protect us from facing challenges. No. <clears throat> like the rest of the world, we will face real dangers and we will face real temptation. And withdrawing from the world is not part of God's plan. God is working with us, in us, and through us to transform this broken world. And you and I are his tools that would do that. And there you are, struggling with all the things that you are facing and very tempted to go the way of the world and to do things the way the world does. And I want to ask you, 
and I want to remind you, I want to urge you, I want to plead with you. Remember who you are in Christ. You and I are still the agent of God's change. We are called to preserve the world from decay. And that's what it means to be the salt of the earth. See, where God has placed you, that's exactly where your saltiness is required. And the question is, are you fulfilling your responsibility where you are? And that's the first point, really. And that is, we are salt. Maybe I should say, we are still the salt of the earth. So that hasn't changed. The fact that we are going through the struggle we are going through, it hasn't changed. The second thing is this, and you can see this from verses 14 and 15. Jesus says to his disciples, You are the light of the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under the basket but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Light of the world. And again, you can see here, Jesus is not saying we should or we ought to be. We are the light of the world. He states that all of those who claim to be Christian, who call upon the name of the Lord, who confesses Jesus as Lord and Savior, Jesus says to you and to me, we are citizens of the kingdom and, the, and his ambassadors in this world. You are the light of the world. And that is a fact. The question really is this. Are you on the stand and shining bright into the world? Or are you under the bucket or basket and you are not shining bright? But the fact of the fact of the matter that you are the light of the world doesn't change. What changes is whether you are on the stand, shining bright, or under the basket and not being affected. And of course, God says we should be on the stand so we can give light to the, into this dark world. Isn't it amazing? I don't know if you notice that. When Jesus says to these guys, his disciples, and he says to you and to me, we are the light of the world. It is an amazing statement because Jesus himself, when you look at John 8 verse 12, he calls himself the light of the world. Now Jesus, he says, I am the light of the world. And then he turns around and he says, you are the light of the world. How amazing is that? That our Lord Savior, who is the light of the world, could look at us and say, you guys are also the light of the world. It is a startling statement. And maybe we just take it for granted because we've heard it so many times. But what is the link between Jesus being the light of the world and us being the light of the world? It's simple, isn't it? Christ shines into the world through us, through you and me. So in other words, God in his goodness and mercy has placed his Holy Spirit in us. And the Holy Spirit in us continues to work within us. And, and in so doing, we then shine bright into the world that is so dark and so discouraged. That is the link. God is in Christ. Christ is in you. And you are the hope of the world. You and I are here because God wants us here and God wants us to shine this light ever so bright. It shines through you and me. 
It shines out into this world that is so dark. And how does it do it? Families by families, village by village, suburbs by suburbs, cities by cities, countries by countries, and continent by continent. In other words, God is at work throughout the whole world. But how does he do it? By me being effective here in Hellcrest and you being effective wherever you are. God says, as we brighten the corners where we are and all of us doing that, the light, the gospel light would actually shine bright throughout the world. God has placed his soldiers in every corner of every village for one reason, so we can influence with the gospel and shine the gospel light into the world. But how can we do that? How do we do that as God's people at this point in time? How can we be a light? Let me first start by saying, you cannot be the light of the world if you choose to blend in with the world. You can't walk the ways of the world and speak the language of the world and still hope to be the light of the world. You can't. You have to stand with God and consistently and continuously keep catching yourself when you're tempted to go the way of the world. We are the city on the hill. And the city on the hill shines bright into the village around or the town around. Our faith in God and our salvation through Christ should never be hidden. Not even by this COVID. So, since we started this lockdown, I spent so much time trying to help you understand that God continues to work with us and that God continues to protect us. And this time, I am focusing on you. And I'm saying, while God is doing what he's doing, he also expects you to do what he's called you to do. Where there is crisis, there you would find new opportunities. Where there is darkness, there you would find an opportunity to shine your light. And this COVID pandemic is no exception. And your personal circumstances, no matter how you view it, actually, it's no exception. And the fact is this, as Christians, we can choose. You and I can choose to either join this ever-growing choir of the grumpy members who are singing doom and gloom songs. Or we can choose to remain positive and continue to serve God and bring hope in a situation that otherwise could be very easily go down that route of hopelessness and doom and gloom. It's a choice we have to make. If we believe that God is in control, if we believe that he is sovereign, if we believe that he is working out his plan even through this, then we can never join that choir. We can never join that choir. We can choose to be positive and to continue to shine our light into darkness. And so, how do we close this? As uh, someone this morning, I have reminded you that Jesus still calls you the light of the world. He still calls you the salt of the earth. And then he closes this passage by saying this. He says, in the same way, so this same way is referring to, referring to the light that is on the stand and the city that is on the hill. He says, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see 
your good work, your good deeds, and then glorify your Father in heaven. So God's glory comes through you. It is as you do your work, in other words, as you live the gospel life, as you continue to serve God's people in the way that God has called you to do, as you continue to walk with him, the world will see the power of the gospel in your life and then give glory to God. <clears throat> God calls us to bring hope and light into the world that is quickly becoming dark and hopeless. And the way we do it is not just by proclaiming the gospel. It's not by just saying there's hope, there's hope. It's also by really living for him. So we will back what we say with how we live. And this light, this light of the world, it shines when we live for God in good times and in tough times. It shines when we willingly and joyfully submit our will under God's will and authority. It shines when we are honest and truthful in our dealings. It shines when we are gracious and gentle to those who don't show grace and those who are abrasive. The gospel shines when we live for Christ, when we honor him, when we seek to please him, and that's what it means, really, to shine in the world. It means doing something that is opposite. So the light is only bright, and that brightness becomes quite visible if it's dark. So if the world is so dark and we choose to be light, it means we have to do things different. When people complain and whine, we remind them of the goodness of God and help them to see that God is still with us, that God is still in control, and that this trouble, this struggle, this suffering, this pain will come to pass. Our light brings salvation to the perishing world and God's glory. It starts with you and with me. So as we conclude, my brothers and sisters, it is good for us to remember what God has done for us, but at the same time, we must not forget what God expects of us. We can still make a difference. You and I can still make a difference in South Africa, in this area here at Upper Highway. We can still make a difference. And we can make a difference not because we're stronger, not because we are educated, not because we have unlimited resources, not because all things are well with us. No. We can make a difference in our area because we have Christ in us, the hope of glory. His glorious light eliminates darkness and it confronts fear and it brings hope. Christ Church family, my family, we can still make a difference. And the question is, are you willing? Because it's not about the ability. It's about moving from under the bucket and taking a stand for the gospel. Will you join me as we do that? Let's pray. Father, we know that many, many Christian stars have lost their sparkle. Many Christians, indeed, they are under buckets because of 
the struggle they're going through. We pray that you would help us to be resolute this morning, to make a decision to move and be on that stand and shine ever so bright so that the world may see your, your glory, your power. Help us to live like responsible citizens of the kingdom and wonderful ambassadors of this kingdom. Help us to serve your people with dignity, honor, and transparency. And help us to seek to help people, even though ourselves may find a little bit stressed, but that we may remember that there are many, many people who are in worse situation than ours. And we thank you for blessing us and for enabling us to be in the position where we are. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and He has said that he 